Hello everyone and welcome back to Airdrop Public Library Virtual Programming. Last week we made a very simple Mario platformer game. And this week we are going to learn how to use these clone tools here. Um, and to do that we are, are going to make a game like Cookie Clicker. You might have seen Cookie Clicker around before or games similar to it. Let's just jump right into it. Um, so this for this one, I think we're going to call it Kitty Clicker, and we're going to be petting the kitty. And to start, we're going to need some variables. I'm going to make a new variable. This will be for all sprites. We're going to call this pets. We're going to make another one and call it pets per second. And as always when starting, we're going to pull out our little when flag is clicked and just set both of those to zero. Set pets and pets per second to zero. And then we're going to take our forever and we're going to change pets by pets per second and then wait one second. So this will be our our main sort of game control where as we increase our pets per second we are we are gaining more pets and then the next most important thing is when the sprite is clicked we are going to add it to our pets manually. So Back in variables, I'm going to change pets by one. Now when we click the cat, we gain some pets. Um, this is pretty good, but let's add some visual feedback. And what I mean by that is I want to make it do something when I, when I click on it so that the players know that it is doing something. But I think we're going to change the size. That might be in the looks, I think. Yeah, we're going to set size to, uh, let's go 160. Then we're going to wait a second. And I always forget where wait is. It's in control here. Let's wait uh, probably 0.1 seconds, and then we're going to change it back. Change it back to 150. Now when you click on it, looks good. All right, so now let's make a shop where, where we can spend these pets to start making pets over time or pets per second. And just click on this backdrop and we're going to draw in a little background shop thing. Uh, so let's use this line tool and we'll find a nice, nice color to use. Uh, maybe a bluish. There. Um, I have broken this somehow. <laughs> I'm not sure how. Back to paint and then onto line. Yeah, okay. Let's get this back onto a bluish. That sounds good. Alright, and then we'll make this really fat. As fat as I can make it. I don't want the black outline though. I would like a blue outline. I don't know why it keeps on doing that. Good. Yes. Okay, now let's just draw over here a little bit until I'm happy with it. Then we will put in some text, maybe a green or yellow, or a greenish yellow. I call it buy. Alright, and make it bigger. This is our buy menu. Back into code, let's find something for the people to buy. Uh, what do cats like? Cake, maybe? Um, 
this weird thing. How about we take a fishbowl? Am I going to be able to buy those fish? Uh, a little bigger. 130. There we go. So now that we have the fishbowl, uh, make sure we clicked on that and then events. And the flag is clicked. We're going to have to make some variables. So first I want to do it for this sprite only. This will be cost. So this is how much it will cost to buy it. Let's set our cost to, let's start at, so let's say 12. And then events when the sprite is clicked. What do you want to do? We want to check to see if we can afford it. If we can, we buy it. If not, we maybe say we don't have enough pets. So what does that sound like? It sounds like an if statement to me, an if else. If else our pets is greater than my cost, then we buy it, as in change our pets by negative cost, which means we'll have to do some math. In operators, we can take cost and times that by negative one. That'll and give us negative cost, so it'll subtract that from our pets. Next, we want to maybe increase our cost. Have, have the cost go up as we, we buy more things. So we're going to change the cost by... I change the cost by the cost times maybe... Point two. There we go. Okay. So this will be cost plus um, one fifth of the cost. So that it'll kind of ramp up a little bit. It won't be linear. It'll be exponential. All right. And then since we did buy it, we do also have to change our pets per second. Change pets per second. Uh, maybe we'll go 0 0.5 for everyone. And else we want to say something, right? We want to say you don't have enough pets for that. There you go. So we can buy it. We, we're now at 0 0.1 pets per second. 0 0.5 sorry and hold on let's click this so we have click start we click him to get some pets and click on it we don't have enough pets for that but if we get up to 12 we can buy it and look our pets are going up slowly by themselves now this is pretty cool but there's one more thing i want to do and in control, we're going to put a little forever loop in there. And we're going to say if we're touching the mouse pointer, we want to tell the user how much it costs. So we're going to say, we're going to say I cost this much. And to kind of put those together, I think I need to use something special. I'm not sure where it is. I think it's in, yes. We're going to use this join. We're going to say, I cost space. Make sure you put your space in there because it won't do that for you. I cost cost. And then we're going to have to put another join in there. 
space pets exclamation mark. But together it says I cost our cost pets. All right, so let's stop and start this and see if it works. I cost 12 pets. 12. Now it costs 14.4. Ooh. Um, I don't really like the those um weird decimal places. So let's get rid of that. And we're going to use I think in this we can use yes, ceiling and floor. So ceiling will always round a number up and floor will always round a number down. So if it's 17.28, ceiling will, will make it 18. And if it's 17.28, floor will make it 17. So let's stick that into here. And we're going to use ceiling. Put this into here and then slot that back into there. We move it over a little bit so I can actually read what, what we're working on. Okay, so now it says 18 pets, and that's accurate. All right. So now I want some cool kind of feedback um, because it. it in the original cookie clicker, you'd like click on the cookie and then like a little, a, a small little cookie would appear and float off or something. So I want to do something like that. Uh, I think I'm going to paint just a little cat's face. Uh, I'm going to use black, black lines, that's good. And it's going to be a little bit bigger. Let's zoom in just so I know I'm working well. All right. There we go. And something like this, maybe. Looks perfect. Okay. Let's call this happy face. Make it a little bit smaller. And this is where we start using that uh, special thing that I told you about, the when I start as clone. We are going to be cloning this thing. This thing. It'll it'll be cloned, it'll do its thing, and then it'll disappear. So we're going to end it with delete this clone afterwards. If we don't have this in here, it'll just constantly make more and more and more of these, and then it'll crash our game because it can't keep track of all of them. So our first question is, when do we want to start spawning these? And I think that's when we click on, click on here. So when we click on this guy, we're going to create a clone of Happy Face. And when Happy Face starts as a clone, let's... First we need to figure out where it is going to start. So I want it to go to probably my mouse pointer. Let's set its size. Set its size to, we'll say, 40%, because I do want it a little bit smaller than that. And we're going to use some cool effects. I'm going to set the ghost effect to zero. And then later we'll be turning this ghost effect up and up and as we do that it'll start fading into the background. It'll, it'll start to disappear. Um, but I think as we go along I want to have it move. So I'm going to go back in variables and we're going to make a couple of variables. All three of these variables will be for this sprite only, because I want each of the clones to have their own version of, of this variable. I don't want them all sharing the same one, I want them having their own. So that's why it's very important you make this for this sprite only. 
and we're going to call this one rotation. Rotation. I'm going to make another one, this sprite only. Call it local x. And one more, this sprite only, local y. And let's pull out all three of those and set them. Uh, rotation, local x, and local y. And now, one of my favorite things to add into any video game, a little bit of randomness. So our rotation, we can make it a difference between, I'll say, negative 20 and positive 20. Now local x and local y will be negative 5, positive 5. Let's duplicate that and put it into there. Back into looks. Um, let's do this. Not a forever loop. We want repeat because we do want this to end eventually. And after it ends, we delete it. Uh, let's stick this 30 times. It, it'll, it'll do what's in here. And first things first, we want to start turning up our ghost, a ghost effect. We're going to set our ghost effect. Or no, sorry, we want to change our ghost effect. Where's that one? Change color effect. Change ghost effect by, let's say, 3. It's a little slow. We're going to make it shrink into the background. We're going to change our size by negative 1, we'll say. And then we're going to turn, doesn't matter which way, because it'll be random. Turn by our rotation. And then change our x and change our y by this local x and y that we made earlier. This is set I need change. local y and local x and then we need to wait just a little bit i'll go 0 0.1 second there's probably even less than that 0 0.01 there we go and at the very end we delete this clone so back in our variables we can hide some of this stuff we don't really need to see it. And with our fishbowl cost, we can hide that as well. And now let's test it. See how it works. Ooh, look at that. Pretty cool. So let's take this. We're going to hide it. This will just make it in invisible. I think because we've done that now, yeah, we're we're gonna have to show it in our code. So under looks, we have this hide and show here. We're gonna hide it just before we delete it, and then show it when we're ready to. There you go. And I think one other thing I want to do is I just want to put that into the background. Um. layer that's what i'm looking for and that needs to go into the happy face i don't know where that went <laughs> go to back layer there we go so now it kind of comes off behind some of them kind of shoot off really far some of them are a lot slower which is all thanks to a random generation in here so that's pretty cool so when we click it, it creates a clone of our happy face. It goes and 
it does its thing and then at the very end it deletes itself that's pretty cool let's uh, maybe let's create one more item to buy here and then we'll be done so let's find something what else do cats like not a dog that's for sure fox a frog griffin chick yeah let's take the chick okay let's put this into our buy menu here and then I'm basically just going to copy over this stuff duplicate it and put it into here duplicate this put it down and then put it into here and then I can get rid of this again and when I come into here yeah they're both in here so now because we made cost for this sprite only, this has created a, a new cost for this sprite only. As I change this, it should only change it for our chick. So maybe we'll make this one much more expensive. We'll make this one 50, and then it will change pets per second by something crazy like 10. So let's pause and restart. That should get our code going. I cost 50 pets, I cost 12 pets. So we can see now that there are two different variables for cost. One that is held by this and the other one that is held by the fish. As we get started now, I can buy the fish. And then that's going way, way up. Let's try buying this. Yep, we can see our pets per second is now at 10.5, and our pets is going way up. This costs 60 now. Now it costs 72. All right, pretty cool. Well, thank you so much for listening. I've been Adam, and have a great day.